Good evening and welcome to this regular meeting of the Holota City Council. It's August 22nd, 2019 and we're underway at 7 p.m. Uh, tonight we'll start our agenda with the invocation and that'll be done by Council Member Bies tonight. And then we have the pledge to the American and Texas flag. So if you would please stand for the invocation and pledges. Let us give thanks for all the blessings, opportunities, and challenges you've given us. Guide us with your strength and wisdom so we can make the right decisions for all the citizens of Holotus. With this being the budget season, help us to make choices that will benefit our citizens and employees, not only now, but well into the future. The start of a new school year is upon us. Please give our wonderful teachers the resolve and patience to educate our young people as they move on in life. As always, we ask that you please keep our first responders not only here, but all over the country safe while they perform their unselfish duties. For those that are not able to be with their family and loved ones because of military service, we pray for your quick and safe return. May we give our best always and be assured of your presence with us. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to the Texas, one state under God, one and indivisible. Okay, next up we have a proclamation, and this is uh, for um, American uh, Payroll Week, National Payroll Week, and uh, we were gonna present it to Tabby Durr, our, our city treasurer, and, uh, but she's not able to be here tonight, so I'm gonna read it anyway for uh, the record and the video, and uh, we'll be presenting this to Tabby sometime next week. But uh, it says, Office of the Mayor, Holotus, Texas, proclamation, National Payroll Week. Whereas the American Payroll Association and its more than 20,000 members have launched a nationwide public awareness campaign that pays tribute to the more than 150 million people who work in the United States and the payroll professionals who support the American system by paying wages, reporting worker earnings, and withholding federal employment taxes. And whereas payroll professionals in Holotus play a key role in maintaining the economic health of Holotus, carrying out such diverse tasks as paying into the unemployment insurance system, providing information for child support enforcement, and carrying out tax withholding, reporting, and depositing. And whereas payroll departments collectively spend more than $2.4 trillion annually complying with myriad federal and state wage and tax laws, and whereas payroll professionals have become increasingly proactive in educating both the business community and the public at large about the payroll tax withholding systems, and whereas payroll professionals meet regularly with federal and state tax officials to discuss both improving compliance with government procedures and how compliance can be achieved at less cost to both government and businesses. Now therefore I, Thomas A. Schoolcraft, on behalf of the members of City Council and by virtue of the authority vested in me as Mayor of the City of Holotus, Texas, do hereby proclaim September 2nd through 6th, 2019 as National Payroll Week and recognize Tabitha Durr for promoting awareness of the payroll accounting processes. In witness whereof, I have hereunto set my hand and caused this seal to be affixed. And Tabby, uh, Tabby does do all of our payroll and uh, deposits and uh, this direct deposit into the employees' accounts and uh, she sequesters herself for about two days every two weeks to do that task. So we appreciate her doing that along with everything else that she's required to do. Okay, that being said, uh, next up we have three public hearings and uh, I will go ahead and, and read these and, and open them and read them. And then uh, uh, since we don't have anybody that signed up to speak, we'll close them and, and go to the next and then on to the rest of the agenda. So item number three is a public hearing to give, well, let me, oh, I shouldn't hit my hammer. I'm excited, yeah. I'm excited. <laughs> public hearings. Okay, at 7.05, I'm opening uh, uh, the public hearing. <laughs> 
This is a public hearing to give all interested persons the right to appear and be heard on proposed City of Holotus fiscal year ending 2020 budgets, including but not limited to the General Maintenance and Operations Fund, Debt Service or Interest in Sinking Fund, Capital Replacement Fund, Municipal Court Security and Technology Funds, Police Department Training and Education Fund, School Safety Fund, PEG or Public Access Channel Fund, Police Department State Forfeiture Fund, Street Maintenance Fund, and Hotel Occupancy or Hot Fund Budgets. Now you understand why I was so excited. Okay. And no one signed up to speak, and we will close this. By golly, it's still 7.05. And I guess I'll go ahead and, uh, oh, it just turned 706, so I'm gonna open item four. This is a public hearing to give all interested persons the right to appear and be heard on the adoption of the proposed tax year 2019 ad valorem property tax rate. And again, nobody signed up to speak, so we will close this one at 706 and open item five. Another public hearing, still at 706. This is a public hearing to give all interested persons the right to appear and be heard on a resolution of the City Council of the City of Holotus, Texas, approving appropriations for the City of Holotus Economic Development Corporation's fiscal year ending 2020, maintenance and operating, interest in sinking, and capital budgets beginning October 1, 2019 and ending September 30th, 2020 to support the EDC's programs, projects, as defined by Texas Local Government Code Chapter 505, Type B corporations and cooperatives. And carrying on, also authorizing the city administrator and EDC executive director to take all necessary steps to implement the provisions of this resolution, incorporating recitals, providing for severability and adopting an effective date. And we will end this public hearing at 7.07. So next up is item six, citizens be heard. Nobody signed up for that either. So uh, we will pass on uh, to the next item and that's the consent agenda, item seven through 10. I would ask uh, council uh, if they have any questions or a desire to pull any of the items seven through 10, any questions? I have a question okay. for nine. Nine, okay. Um, I didn't, I guess I didn't realize that we got a share of bingo prizes. <laughs> and I was wondering how much we've been getting over the years and from what organization? Uh, mainly the Lions Club, it's in the budget is bingo uh, it's revenue. Than. It, it's not much. But isn't that, I guess that's what's confusing. Lions Club, I thought, was a nonprofit. It isn't? It they, is. Yeah, they are, but they're still subject to the tax. A anyone who uh, um, holds bingo events and has prizes and prize <laughs> money is subject to this tax. They'll, they'll pay it anyway uh, to the state. Uh, it's just that there's a pro rata share that comes to uh, any city that chooses to collect it, and we've done it ever since I can remember. So they're just changing the procedure. If, uh, if you look under item nine, the letter from the uh, Texas Lottery Commission, the uh, fourth paragraph pretty well explains it. Yeah. It's less than $1,000. Yeah. Any other questions? Uh, okay. I got a, I'm sorry, I okay. a question on 10. How, do we do a, I, I should know this, but do we do a contract every year with the, with Shabo? For, for these services? Yes, this this is uh, the second or third one we've done. I don't know if it's every year. We'd have to, I didn't, I didn't uh, look at the contract because it's, it's basically the same. Going up quite a bit. It's the same contract that we've had in the past. Yeah. Uh, it begins September 1st, 2019 uh, and ends August 2020, but then it can extend for one year, uh, an additional one year period. Um, this sort of fell through the cracks, frankly, because we yeah. haven't adopted one of these since 2017, but they've been uh, abiding by the 2017 rates, and so it was brought oh, to our attention. That's why the percentages are so high, probably. Yeah. Okay. All right. Go ahead. And uh, at the time that we initiated uh, uh, this contract, 
they were about the only vet clinic that wanted to mess uh, with impounded animals. And that's still the case. Anything else? Yes, okay, then I would look for a motion and a second to approve consent agenda items seven through 10. Mayor, I'd move we approve consent agenda items seven through 10. We have a motion, do we have a second? Second. We have a motion from Meadows. Second from Fredericks. To uh, approve <coughs> consent agenda item seven through 10. No further discussion and uh, required. We'll call the question. All in favor, say aye. 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 Close say no. Motion carries unanimously. Consent agenda items seven through 10 are approved. That takes us to item number 11. There's no action. This is a discussion item only and hopefully direction for uh, us here at City Hall to uh, uh, address on uh, any questions you have on the, uh, the budget. Uh, there have been a, f a few minor changes. If you uh, looked at the uh, new numbers that Rick sent out, uh, nothing major. Uh, Rick can cover that. But we, I, I did ask him to put some information together on the two questions that were presented by uh, Council Member Byes and, and Blue last meeting, primarily increasing the uh, TMRS, or the Texas Municipal Retirement System uh, required or mandated uh, contribution by employees from 6 to 7 percent, which would in turn also increase the city's match of 2 to 1, and then also uh, some questions were uh, posed on the proposed or recommended decrease in the ad valorem property tax rate from 35 cents per hundred to 34 and a half cents per hundred. And so we uh, prepared a chart for that. So Rick, if, if, if you would just uh, mosey up there and we'll see if we have any questions. If not, you can uh, sit back down. Okay, well, did y'all look at, th at these charts and, and hopefully uh, digest them? And R Rick might touch on any of the numbers he feels are Im important in any way. And I don't think that's gonna occur, but you never know. And, but just touch real quickly on the effect of the six to 7%, the two to one match, and then the, uh, the little graph we, or chart we did on the uh, property tax decrease. Okay, um, so under attachment two to item number 11 is where we added additional information about the effective tax rate, what the effective tax rate is, and what the rollback tax rate is. Um, we've also included a chart in here uh, from 2010 through 2019 explaining what our tax rate is, what the effective tax rate was for that tax year, and what the rollback tax rate was for that tax year. Uh, just to, to go over the rollback, uh, and the effective tax rate, generally speaking. So the effective tax rate is the amount of taxes, excuse me, is the tax rate that one would adopt in a subsequent tax year to generally match the amount of ad valorem taxes that one collected in the prior tax year, okay? The rollback tax rate is tied to the assessed valuations of all the properties throughout the city of Pelotas. So as assessed value increases, or excuse me, as the assessed value of property increases, which you can see from 2010 to 2019, it went from $770 million to right now it's at $1.3 billion. As the assessed value increases, the rollback tax rate decreases. And the reason that that occurs is because the state state law is trying to get cities to lower their existing tax rate to follow the effective tax rate, okay? And what that doesn't take into consideration, um, and we've said this before, is that basically what that means is businesses out there are able to increase their collections due to increased costs of operating the, the business through consumer price index. But what this does is it basically says that the state doesn't want cities to be able to do that, okay? Uh, it wants the prior revenues to be the same as the current revenues, 
um, so that there isn't, quote unquote, a tax increase, which of course we've talked about how the tax rate really is not changing. Um, so that's, that's really sort of the, in my mind, the layman's version of how the effective and the rollback tax rate inter interact. As the assessed values go up, the rollback tax rate tends to go down, which then pushes the existing, the current, the actual tax rate closer to the effective tax rate. Are there any questions on that? Yeah, I was, I was just going to add that uh, it, it was really. Uh, did, did you have anything? No, I understand it completely. I, I'll okay. wait for my turn to comment later. <laughs> well, uh, well, go ahead. Uh, but that was exactly what my point was at the last meeting. And, and my point therein is if you take a look at this little chart, or the, 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 the graph, not the graph, but the chart rather, okay, you can see how starting in 2010, the rollback rate was 0.38, but our tax rate wasn't, uh, wasn't that high. And so really starting at 2013, you can see how it went from 0 0.37, 0 0.368, 0 0.355, 50, 46, and 0.3503. So if you take a look at what the revenue is, if a year ago we had decided to lower our tax rate to 0.345, we would have had no choice this year but to lower it, even if our budget didn't warrant it. Because that 0.03 part represents only a small fraction of that 46,000 we're talking about on the, on the rollback rate, it's about $34,000. So if, that's, that was my point. If we roll back, our, if we lower our tax rate today, and you do, as you said in the presentation last year, we have a lot of development, even if we don't have any additional annexation. If our property valuation for the entire city, and I did the math, comes up with $10 million more this year than it was last year, next year we'll be having a conversation where we will be forced to lower our rate because of the rollback rate. That was my point of saying that there. And that I think that as we get closer and closer and closer, I even if we don't, next year may be a very different conversation. That, that was what I was trying to say last year. And I don't know that we want to be in a position of being forced to lower our tax rate because of annexation, et cetera, over something like this. May I offer a, com I don't mean sure. to get into a debate, but a competing uh, conversation with that would be that really the city of Hullo should have lowered its tax rate. If, if we're abiding by state law and the, the, the ideology of what state law is trying to tell us to do, right? We should have lowered our tax rate over the last six years. Every year that the, every year that the effective tax rate um, went down, we should have been trying to catch the effective tax rate. So had we had done that, then we would not have been, in my opinion, at this point, we would not have been in a position of being so close to the rollback tax rate. We probably would have been where we were several years ago, where we were somewhat in between the effective and the rollback tax rate. So yes, I agree with you. Next year, you're likely gonna have to lower that. If you, if you don't lower taxes this year, for sure next year, you're likely gonna have to lower taxes because you're gonna be hitting the rollback tax rate. That is correct. But had the city over the last five or six years lowered it incrementally, um, you would not, in my opinion right now, be in that position, in the position of being so close to the rollback tax rate. Does that make sense? It does, but I'm not there, sure that's a bad thing. Yeah, and that's, that's, that's fine. I, I'm just saying that, that would be the counter argument to that, to that statement, so. Let me get to Jim and then we'll come to you, okay? Jim, come up, go ahead. Cynthia? Well, I was going to say, even though um, we would go down on the tax rate, we're still going to be making the, the revenues because of all of the, the building and everything. We're still going to be making the same revenues, if not more. Uh, as, as I said, uh, I don't understand this. The, why can't we live within a budget like that? Why do we have to continue to, to, to scrape for more money from our citizens when we don't really need to do that? Um, there's a lot of things in this city that we don't necessarily, you know, that are almost like luxuries uh, that we that we have and we provide. But uh, I, I don't know. I just I think we're still getting the money, and in fact, more, despite what you're talking about this rollback rate and all of that. And I think that what 
what um, um, Mr. Schroeder said is, is correct. If we had been lowering and, and thinking of our, our, our citizens <coughs> and lowering the tax rate for them, then we wouldn't be in this situation. And I don't think we're in a situation. We have plenty of money to work with, and we will continue to have plenty of money to work with. That's how I feel. Paul? I, I don't have anything at this time. Bert? Um, I, I just have one thing to say uh, about it. Uh, we're having no new hires this year at all in any department, and I just can't understand why we're lowering the tax rate and not doing any new hires. I mean, we're, um, it, we're to me, that's not, doesn't make any sense to me. We, to me, we should keep the same tax rate so we can possibly hire more employees. And hopefully, this will also help with, uh, if, we, if we decide to do this 1% uh, increase in the TMRS. That's my opinion. Alex, any follow-up? Well, I think, to me, this, this issue is separate than the, the TMRS issue. But the, um, and, and I haven't, we'll, we'll discuss that one separately. I, I will concede the fact that if, if we have the extra budget this year, but in the eight years I've been on council, this is the first time we've actually con come up here and said we have extra. Every year we go through and the mayor and, and, and council members are wishing that there had been additional money for the fire department, for the police department. We would rather have given the employees a little bit more uh, in compensation, which this year we're doing. And so I guess if we have more money than we need, then, then we're not then we're not providing the services that our citizens need uh, in the past because this is the first year we've actually had more f more funds than, than the original budget presented. And if that's the case, then I'd be perfectly happy to continue lowering the tax rate. But I'm just saying that eventually, if we lower it now, we're <coughs> going to get into a position where we won't have a choice. And that's when I think a year or two years from now, when we have a lot of development and property values are going to continue to go up with Bear County Appraisal District, they're going to. And they're going to be going up, and many of them are going to go up 5, 6, 7 percent. And that's going to be essential. Yeah, will it generate <coughs> more money? Sure. But that more money has to cover more services. And eventually we're going to be cutting back on services and or holding back on salaries and or holding back on, on other things for the city. This year we're doing fine, but part of the reason we're doing fine in the last two years is because of the, um, the, the increased tax revenue, which, let's face it, a whole big chunk of it um, could disappear in a heartbeat if, if that one business decides not to continue with their, with their um, tax thing that we did with the, the agreement with them. And, and all of a sudden, then, we find ourselves seriously lacking. I don't know. I, if, if, we, if we're all collectively believing that we have that much extra that we need to lower it, then I, I think that's the case. But I would imagine that there's a lot in this thing that the police department would want more safety equipment. We probably need more officers. Our population has gone up considerably in the last 10 years alone. And with all of the, as you indicated in your presentation of this next year, we're going to have hundreds and hundreds of new houses developed, even in the areas we've already annexed. That's going to take additional services, and that's going to take funds. And I just think that it, it's, well, uh, we'll see where, where it goes. But to me, I think some of that's a little short-sighted. Um, and um, But, you know, if, if we need to lower it, then I'll go with the majority without a question. Jim? Well, my comment, I, I reserved because I wanted to see the, the chain of, of comments here, so it wasn't through lack of, of interest in, in the concept. but. A surplus is not a bad thing. Uh, 2008 was the last time we did a gigantic rollback as far as permits and houses being started, and basically we had a, almost a crash. Uh, that was not the first one. Well, there was one in 94. Prior to that, about every 10 to 12 years. Uh, we, we can't become where we count on hundreds of, as the comments were made tonight, hundreds of permits, or we can't count on new businesses coming in. They probably will. But it's, to me, it's nice to have a surplus, a small surplus that we can work from and then do some planning next year. Could it be a, a potential addition to the police department or fire department? Absolutely. Uh, but I don't want to get to where we count on the fact of we're going to have X number of additional permits to balance our budget uh, because that could disappear for a couple of years very easily. And so 
I still favor getting to the point where we have a small surplus. Yeah. Yeah. Cynthia? Um, every year, um, okay, you, you, we do need to plan for the future. And we do that by seeing what happened in the past. And you're correct, there was, there was always, there's always going to be fluctuations in 2008, as you said. Um, but for the most part, the city is growing. We have maybe 10,000 population. Um, we have all these houses coming in. So what I'm saying is, even if we lower by half a, a half a cent, you know, our tax rate, um, we're still going to be getting more money in. That's what I'm saying. I, I don't understand why that is so difficult to understand because of all the building and everything. And why not, like I said, we were elected to represent the citizens of Holotus, <coughs> not anything else, as, to, to do what's best for them. And I understand that in, in your mind, what's best for them is providing services, for, you know, and which costs money and putting more th police out there or whatever. And I understand that. But I think we have a sufficient staff at this point. We have 81 uh, staff members. That's quite a bit for a small city like, like, like ours. And, and um, remember, that is what, 60 to 70% of, of our revenues go to that. It's a lot of money. And to think that we just need to continue to, you know, we have a new public works that's ca causing, a, it takes a lot of money now. I see our staff exponentially growing to meet the needs, perhaps, of, of the building and, and the businesses. But we're also bringing in all this extra tax revenue. And I have heard too much from citizens saying, yeah, 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 they've kept the tax rate the same, and our taxes keep going up. And, and I just, you know, it's, it's their money, and, and, and uh, it's, it's the citizens' money. It's their taxpayer money, and we need to, to think about them. And, and as we talked about, it's not a heck of a lot, but it's something. And, um, and, I, and I just think that we need to start living, and, and I don't think it's a bad thing that we're going to have to stick with a certain level of, of a tax rate. I don't think that's a bad thing. I happen to be a conservative and believe that we should live within our means, and um, I happen to believe that we can. So um, I'm, I'm all for lowering the, the tax rate uh, by half, half a cent. I think that it's, it's really a no-brainer. Paul? Well, um, I mean, I, I, I can see that... The, the both sides of that, that saving for the future is, is certainly something to consider. Um, but I do think that uh, our citizens probably deserve uh, a little bit of a break. While it's not a huge amount, it's it's symbolic more than anything else. Um, but I do think our citizens probably, after paying for years and years, uh, do deserve a little bit of a break. Um, I, I would like to see how the, the TMRS discussion goes, um, kind of hold my final decision on that. Okay, uh, if I can, I'm uh, just going to toss in a few comments and then we'll do another, another round, uh, <clears throat> just based upon some things that were said. Uh, and, and as we discussed last meeting, this is the first year uh, where we had a surplus going in. Uh, typically, we start out the uh, budget process, uh, uh, <coughs> we being Rick, uh, and then bring it to me, um, of at least a half a million to a million in the hole uh, when we start out. Uh, back in 2011, 12, and 13, we, we lowered uh, those three consecutive years, and it was a nominal amount, but we uh, had a long-range goal of, of slowly working our way uh, back to where it's been in the past. Uh, uh, at least a couple of cents. Uh, the reason uh, in 2017 that uh, we didn't start recommending decreasing it then was, if you recall, the legislature uh, was uh, really attacking municipalities and they wanted the rollback rate uh, lowered back then. They were talking as low as 2.5% over the effective rate. And uh, when that didn't happen, the projection was that, that the legislative session this year, uh, the same thing would happen and it would probably pass. So that's why 
uh, we were hesitant in 2017 and 2018 to recommend lowering it for some of the reasons we're talking about tonight. Uh, however, this legislative session, uh, they did uh, of 7,500 plus bills that were uh, submitted by the, the different representatives and senators. Uh, as I recall, something over 500 of them uh, impacted municipalities. One of those was being the uh, ad valorem tax rollback rate. I was astounded when I heard legislators all the way up to the governor saying that there's absolutely no reason municipalities should have more money year to year. In other words, we shouldn't have more money coming in in revenue this year than we did last year as a municipality. It makes no sense to me. My question is, uh, are, are they uh, thinking that municipalities aren't impacted by inflation just like everybody else? So our costs do go up as a municipality. So uh, hopefully they'll come around on that next session. Uh, the impact to us as a small city was really uh, negligible, uh, if, if any impact at all. That doesn't mean that in future sessions they may go ahead and, and tweak it some more, but it, for the time being, a city like us is, is really not gonna be impacted by uh, this so uh, much as, as maybe larger cities, at least that's my opinion. Uh, as far as employees, uh, Rick and I uh, look at the requests by the different departments each year, and just about everybody wants more employees in their department. Uh, however, when, when we look at the numbers and, and look at what we have, and I, as Cynthia brought up, we, we have uh, a lot of employees. Uh, and so we're looking more at efficiency in each department <coughs> rather than just uh, throwing more people at it because efficiency is, is where these things uh, get out of control. And so that's what we encourage the departments to do is become more efficient with the people that they have rather than just dis indiscriminately adding more employees which would, uh, to me, exponentially affect uh, our expenses year to year. And as I said last time, anything we do now is just going to compound year to year uh, in employees a minimum of 3%, because uh, that's typically the, the increase in salaries that we give. And so that 3% compounding, if nothing else, it's gonna double uh, the uh, overhead for employees without adding anything other than uh, than annual raises in 24 years, we'll be paying twice as much as a city for the same number of employees as we're paying now. So that compounding of the money uh, really makes a difference long term. I don't think any of us will be dealing with that uh, 24 years from now, but it is something to keep in the back of your head. Uh, the voluntary reduction, as Rick brought up, uh, looking at the rollback rate this time, uh, Rick and I feel very strongly that next year um, it, it's going to make us uh, lower our, our tax rate. So my thinking on this by recommending it as, as the budget officer uh, to you guys is uh, I'd rather see us do a good faith reduction when we don't have to rather than wait and be forced to do it uh, as, as I said going in. Uh, it's just to me we've held it steady for six years. Uh, Rick and I have looked at the numbers. Uh, we've been very conservative through the years, and uh, we feel confident. Uh, he and I talked about it at length. I don't feel like it's short-sighted because we've looked at so many factors in here, and if we weren't confident in, in our recommendations, we wouldn't have, have made the recommendation. So um, just wanted to cover that also. And I've already talked about the legislature. But that's, that's basically it. Uh, it's just, uh, as a citizen, as well as a city official, uh, knowing full well that property values go up 10% automatically by bare appraisal district, they don't seem to be capable of uh, giving an increase of less than 10%. Uh, if they do, it's very small. I even sat down there and protesting a couple of years ago to, to our uh, value and was uh, talking to the appraiser and our value had gone up 10%. And I said, why do, why do you guys consistently year to year increase at 10%? I said, anybody could come in here and be an appraiser, just multiply by 1.1. He said, well, the state makes us do that. And I said, uh, no, that's the most you can raise it. You can go 1%, you can leave it where it is. 
but he argued with me they had to raise it 10 percent and uh, it was just mind-boggling to me but but as long as we're dealing with that mentality uh, at the bear county level and the mentality in austin uh, it, it's going to be an ongoing problem but i don't believe they're ever going to be able to get to the point where they destroy cities by eliminating uh, the opportunity to have ad valorem tax uh, we've covered before texas is i think 49th out of the 50 states in in financial assistance that they give municipalities when this was uh, determined they gave municipalities multiple ways to raise revenue the most important was the ad valorem tax rate i don't understand now why they're beginning to handcuff cities and 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 limit the revenue that that a municipality can raise to provide the services as long as a, a city doesn't go overboard and start trying to get more and more money because we don't want to have the perception of being greedy and uh, anyway that was that was my my philosophy in looking at this and recommending it to you it's you guys decision but i did want to just address those few things that were brought up and so now we'll give another round alex I have a question, I guess, and, and I'll either ask you to answer this or, or Rick in, in his professional opinion. Um, because both of you have indicated multiple instances, uh, mo multiple times this evening that the anticipation that our property valuation from this year to next year will increase. Okay. Um, and that will increase for multiple reasons. The, the first reason being the Bear County Appraisal District increasing property value. Second reason, possibly annexation, but probably more so development of property already annexed. So the rollback rate is 8%, correct? Now, yes. Right. So if we, if we anticipate in, increasing in total valuation 10% between now and next year, the rollback rate is 8%. That means we will be forced to lower the valuation, whether we need the money or not, next year by that difference of 2%, strictly due to the property valuation. That's the part I talked about, is the fact that I think we're fine this year, but if we voluntarily raise it sooner than we're gonna be pushed into it, and all of these graphs that are provided show that we're gonna get pushed into it, simply because we're growing in property valuation. And that I guess in, if, if we were to lower it, I, get, I agree, it's a great, wonderful, good faith gesture. <coughs> Probably isn't gonna allow any of our citizens to purchase anything they wouldn't otherwise have, okay? At $15 a year for a $300,000 house, I doubt that any, I mean, other than the good face gesture, um, and it, the end result is that in a year or two or three, we're gonna start seeing at 34 and a half, go to 34 to 33 and a half, whether we need the money or not. And even if the state doesn't <coughs> do anything more, the answer is we're gonna have to be starting to as assess what services get cut or what optional things that happen in the city. And there are a lot of very nice things that occur in the city that cost money. And those are gonna be probably the first ones to be cut. And that was my point. If, thank you. That's it? Jim? Uh, just, I think mainly repeating, but several people have mentioned that it is symbolic at this point. It, it's, not a, it's not a material number. Uh, it's, it's a symbolic gesture. Um, whether we make the gesture now or when we have to a year from now is, is a matter of politics um, more than, than uh, content. So I would rather leave it, but I'm not hard over on either side. It, it, I, I voted the way I did as more of a placeholder as to where we're in this discussion, as to where we're going. Um, but I, I still would like to see us take a look at, yes, we are planning on growth, where I get confused when people start talking about this, it's just one way is bad and this way is good, but if we continue to have growth, we're gonna to continue to have increased needs for services. If we don't have continued growth, then the need for services will, will fall back, perhaps. But if we're in this two hundreds of permits that's been banded around several times, then we're gonna need additional services, whether it be police, fire, or whatever, it's gonna to have to come. 
The other night I was happened to be the beneficiary of city services and we only had, basically it was the middle of the night, we only had two police officers on duty. Uh, that's fine for now, it, it works very well for us. Uh, they were able to respond, they had multiple major events happening in the city and they were finally able to res respond to something. At some point that's gonna become problematic uh, because of us growing in size and, and population. I, I'm concerned about being able to provide those services and those luxury things as, as, or be, uh, beneficial things, but right now I'm looking at it as a placeholder. <coughs> I'm gonna leave it alone, uh, but if the majority of the people would say, let's go ahead and drop it, I'm really not someone to say, let's have a conflict about it. Okay, Cynthia? I actually like the idea of the tax rate going down. As a citizen, I'm, and I'm, I'm also speaking as a, an elected official, um, as I said, uh, all of these dire, um, you know, the, the glass is half empty kind of uh, pronouncements is, is not a way that I've, I live. I, I just don't live in that, that world. I live in a world where I'm very optimistic that things are going to work out, and they, they usually do for the most part. And so um, I, I like the idea of our tax rate. And if we, if we have to be forced, you know, by the, by the Texas legislature to go down on our tax rate, well, by golly, that's fine with me because I do believe and I do know that we're going to have enough money to fund the necessary things that we need in this city, which is police and fire. Uh, and, and, every, and of course, our, you know, the, the people and then the administration that, that need to administer. So I know that we're going to have it. The, we're, it's going to come in, it's gonna, and it's going to work. Uh, and it's, it's not necessarily symbolic, us lowering the tax rate by half a cent. They are going to get some money back. I mean, there is going to be a little bit of extra money. Not a lot, but it's something. And instead of the tax going up every year more and more and more, the tax rate stays the same, but they all go, why are our taxes? You say that you haven't raised taxes but our taxes go up every year and I have noticed mine, you know, I mean, it's gone up several hundred dollars over the last several years. You know, Halotus used to have a much lower, um, I, I, I'm thinking of when I first moved here, of course, that was a long time ago, but, but it, you know, it was a minimal amount and now it's, it's the second highest after the NISD, you know, that's another story that I don't want to talk about because that gets me upset, but, that's the biggest, you know, issue that we have. Uh, so, if you look at your tax bills, the the, the Halotus tax rate is the highest after the NISD, and it's because of all of the new development and all of things coming in. Uh, so, I don't have the the negative out, outlook that you guys have, and I, I just don't operate in that world. So, and like I said, things have worked out for the last 63 years for me. Paul. If, if y'all could look into the, your, your magic ball, could y'all anticipate anything that would, what 2020 would look like as far as income from property taxes? Well, that's true. What, what kind of, if, if we had to lower it, what would it take it to? Have y'all kind of looked at, at that at all? Well, that's the, the revenue is pretty well in the budget that we're anticipating. And of course, as I've said many times before, uh, a budget is nothing more than a, a best guess or an estimate. Are you, are you we, asking for 2020? For are you asking whether we have well, incorporated tax year 2020? Yeah, or 2021, right? Ne next year's budget. Well, what would be the anticipated change if we? Well, it depends on how many new homes are built in Brycewood, um, and uh, how many businesses come in. Plus, as Alex was saying, what what the values will go up by bare appraisal district. Uh, I haven't looked at it overall, but, but typically most houses that you look at do go up to 10% maximum. I'm not saying that's 100% because I'm sure it's probably not, but that seems to be the trend each year. Did you have any comments to that? I'm not, I'm not really understanding your question. His? I'm just asking you to kind of look in your, in your crystal ball and see what would I, happen next. I, I think he's asking with the uh, assessed value of the property how much is it going to go up before the rollback rate uh, yeah. uh, knocks down the tax rate? And with it only being a point zero 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 three eight two above our tax rate, I'm 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 ninety nine percent sure 
next year the rollback rate's going to be below 35 cents. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it almost has to be because that's not that much of a move. No. You can look and see how much it's moved each year, and it's it's a lot more than that 0 .00382. Right. I mean, that, I would I would yeah, concur that, with that. There, that's a really complicated question. It is. And it, it has a really complicated tax, answer because well, you're you, talking about the assessed <laughs> valuations of homes. You're talking about the senior tax freeze. I don't know how many people next year are going to turn over that, that magic number of 65. 65. Um, I mean, there's a lot of things involved in that. So I, I'm not quite sure I can answer that it, right it, here, right sense. now. It, there's too many moving it, parts. It, it's a multiple page, legal page of, of just uh, mumbo jumbo. Okay. It's okay. very difficult. And it's follow. not it's not just based on the assessed valuations of homes, although those are that is the, the biggest component of it in determining the eight percent. But and again, you can't take our current tax rate and add eight percent to it and come up with the rollback rate. It's because it's not based upon our current tax rate. It's based on our current tax rate, the assessed value it's based upon literally four pages of calculations. Okay. okay. Which I can certainly send out to you. Uh, to look at that. No, no thank you. And, and go ahead. Uh, and I'm not being facetious. I'm, if you want to see it, you can see it. There's a lot of stuff in there that, that no, that's you. complicated and that's it. Bert? above my pay grade, fair, fair okay. grade. I'm, I'm not, I don't have a problem at all with the powers to be to tell us to lower our tax rate, but I'm not in favor of lowering our tax rate at this time. When you talk about services all and, and all that, we're going to need another fire station in the very near future to cover, uh, I guess we'd call it the south side of town, the Brycewood area and all that, because with, the, with all the traffic out here, our response times are going up. We're going to need another fire station soon. Uh, and then another thing, I know the mayor was talking about the legislature and everything, and it sounded like he, was, he, he wasn't expecting them to go after the small cities in the next, uh, I guess it would be tw in 2021. And I don't trust them as far as I can throw them. I think they will come after us, and uh, I, I would rather have the powers be tell me, tell us to lower the tax rate in, instead of doing it self-inflicted. That's the way I feel. And then another thing too, uh, it, it's for my house, it would be maybe $15 a year. Uh, that to me is symbolic. I mean, it, it, it it, it makes no sense to me to lower it just for $15 a household on a $300,000 house. Makes no sense to me at all. So that's all I have to say. Well, let's lower it more then. Uh, okay. Uh, and I did want to address one more thing about annexation. That's pretty well out mm -hmm. for, for any cities. The, well, it is of the, the only, uh, hold on, the only uh, way we can probably annex in the future is if uh, a developer comes in like Bryce Wood did and voluntarily ask us before any development's done when they're the single property owner. And we're, we're talking to uh, just about everybody that's proposing something in the city or in our ET, ETJ uh, and, and trying to, you know, make them aware of the, the annexation potential. But uh, we're limited on what we can say and what we can do in that also by, by the Texas Local Government Code. Okay, well, I, I uh, certainly appreciate the uh, discussion on that. If, if you all don't mind, we'll move on to the next, and then we can hit this uh, next uh, time if you feel it's necessary. So let's hit uh, the TMRS issue real quick. Okay. Uh, included within your packets uh, under the same item, but under, I believe it was attachment three, um, we did include uh, information on what uh, what would occur with both the contribution rate plus the unfunded liability, et cetera, et cetera, uh, if we went from a deposit rate of 6 to 7%, um, the contribution rate would go from 6.7% to 7.71%, so an increase of the 1.01%. Um, the unfunded actuarial liability would increase by about $84,000. Uh, from 667,000 to 752,000, um, and the uh, funded, the city's funded ratio would go from 90.8 to 89.7. Uh, if we opted to increase uh, the contribution rate from six to seven percent, 
The city's additional contribution would be about $28,000 year over year. That would uh, increase, uh, as you can see in the TMRS study that was provided to you all, the uh, full rates or the contribution rates would go up. Uh, and so we would anticipate the 28,000 year over year increasing, uh, particularly as people retire. Uh, we did include uh, additional comp uh, discussion about what would happen to people's take-home pays. Now, this is prior to d uh, deductions that that employee has agreed to uh, take out of its paycheck. This is just a very basic uh, scenario that gives you what their pay rate would be and what the annual difference would be and what the per pay period uh, difference would be. Again, that's gross. That isn't after contribution or I could, could I just ask to clarify that table? So a $30,000 pay rate, uh, their pay period difference would go up by $11.54. That's correct. That's correct. Okay. Every two weeks. That's your withholding. Every, yeah. Uh, we did include a conversation here. There is a, another investment opportunity or retirement opportunity that the city provides, and that's through ICMA. Um, it is an optional program. Uh, that the city offers. There is no uh, match uh, associated with that. Um, and we've included uh, the plan features, the contribution overview, the asset summary, and the plan health monitor. Um, basically, we have 51 individuals that are participating in ICMA right now. 30 are active employees, 11 are employees but don't contribute, and 10 employees are separated from service with the city. And with ICMA, the maximum contribution that you can take out of one's paycheck or that you can contribute is $19,000. The next page that we included was the actual plan change study. You'll see that the only change between current and proposed is going from the six to 7%. And so that then gives you the increase from the total rate from 6.7 to 7.71. The next page is from TMRS as well. That's the projection evaluation results which tells you what the full rate, the, the estimated full rate contribution will be from 2019 to 2027. Uh, you can see it goes from the 6.7% to the 7.88%. Uh, and then you can see the funded ratios from 2018 to 2027. Um, the next page is the actual TMRS city plan that tells you what we offer currently, gives you some information on TMRS as a whole, uh, both from 2016 through 2018 for the, for the retirement system itself, plus the, its distribution of membership among cities, who has five, who has six, and who has 7%. There are a few cities that, ha that only require a 3% contribution. That was prior to the vast majority of cities uh, adopting TMRS as its, as its retirement system. Uh, it also gives you distribution of membership by one to one, 1 1.5 to one, or two to one, which is the city's matching contribution. It goes through the summary of plan provisions uh, as well. And that basically is, is sort of tells you what each one of those things means, the matching ratio, the, the total contribution rate, et cetera. Okay. Um, we'll Look for questions. Bert, do you have any questions or comments on this? Um, I've, I've been doing a, a verbal poll with our, uh, with, with our employees, and uh, I've only had one employee said that they weren't in favor of the 1% increase. Now, I've heard other people say that nobody's in favor of it. I, I can't remember who said it, but anyway, is there any way you can do a, uh, a, a, a survey to see how our employees feel about it? Yeah, I mean, we could use SurveyMonkey to do a survey of all city employees if that's what uh, council requires. Well, I'm or just would like. I I, th I think that would be a good thing. I think the perception is that they're not in favor of it. Uh, I think they are. So, this would kind of prove my point. I I hope it proves my point because I think this is what we need to do for our employees. When we talk about uh, wanting to keep our employees, I know this five percent increase in in the wages is is a good way to start. And uh, uh, this also, I think, would, uh, would be an incentive for our employees to stay with us. So that's all I have for now. 
Alex? That's a lot of data, and I sure appreciate um, Mr. Schroeder and, and company to provide this because this is exactly the information that I, I wanted to be able to, to look at. I, I appreciate his presentation, and I, and I want, before I make a final decision on it, I want some, some kind of additional information time to think about through. What I can tell from the one page, the one title at the bottom says page 12, is that as a city only providing 6% were uh, by far in the majority, uh, in the minority of cities in what we match uh, and what we provide and, and require. When 80 per, or 75 roughly percent of the cities that are in TMRS uh, of all sizes do the 7%. So I can see that we're, we are an outlier in that regard. We do seem to be consistent with the two to one matching though. Um, I don't recall remembering that I was aware that there was an alternative that the employees could contribute to. And, and I, I, that, that changes some of my thought knowing that there is an alternative that they can voluntarily do. Um, and, and that to, makes me feel a little bit better about, about that. I don't know that $28,000 a year and even if it increases a little bit year to year, and that's what I heard you say, right? 28,000 would be if we chose to go up, that would be the impact to the year, this year's budget. Year Is that one. correct? That's correct. Okay. Um, when, when the surplus in this year is $150,000, however, given our previous conversation, I'm not so sure how long that surplus will last. And so maybe making a long-term commitment of this nature anticipating that in a few years we either voluntarily or involuntarily have to um, to restrict our our budget to a lower tax rate um, I, I haven't made my final decision I am still of the opinion <coughs> in general that um, one of the things that attracts people long term to any company or entity to become an employer of choice we want employees of choice we have to be an employer of choice, and to do that is benefits. I understand people move quickly from one job to the next when they're young and inexperienced and paycheck to paycheck, but when they've decided on a career, they go for employers of choice, and they do so based on benefits and long-term decisions. This is a long-term thing, in my opinion. Thank you. Jim? Similar comments. Um, to me, we're, we're, we're in competition with other small suburban cities for our employee base. And the, the, the one chart which was the most telling to me was the one that says that we're an outlier, I think was your term, but if we're not creating, we're not putting the 7% in. So if we're competing with other small cities to keep employees uh, and we aren't providing the same things that other cities are, I think that's one strike against us. We have things going for us, and there's benefits to being with the city. But I'd like to see us in the 7% for that particular reason was, is the prime, th prime reason that I would say to go along with it, because I think it does put us on a level playing field, and then all the benefits of working here can come into play. If we're not on a level playing field, I, I think it could be a problem. Okay. Maybe. Yep. Cynthia? Uh, and where is the the notation that most of the cities do seven percent? That's that's, that's at will. one bar chart, right there. And what cities are we talking about? This is T, uh, TMRS uh, statewide. All of the cities that they have, and there's a, a number in there somewhere, eight hundred and some odd cities, as I recall, uh, that participate in the TMRS. Uh, that's, that's the percentage of cities that provide the, either the five, six, or seven. The 3% the is no longer available for new cities. Yeah. <clears throat> but there are some that still, uh, as you can see on the chart, still some that have a 3% withholding. I would just, on the, it, we don't know the name, but which cities are the ones that give 7%? Um, all I can tell you is it's about 75% of the cities that are members of TMRS. And we can get that list, I'm sure. It's public information like okay um, I uh, I can tell you that I find it interesting that that the City Council who's supposed to represent the citizens 
is so concerned about our employees. They don't mind giving the employees all the extra money year by year, but they don't want to give the citizens, the taxpayers back any money. I just find that very interesting. It's very odd oxygen for me because, as an, again, as an elected official, I'm, I'm not saying that we shouldn't care about our, our, uh, our staff and our employees, <clears throat> but um, I think that the 6% is sufficient and I also agree, I mean, believe that um, forcing everyone to give seven, uh, to have, because they have to give, and then the city has to also uh, match that. And um, I, uh, of course, you know, so some people would you know, say, yeah, I'll give my little bit, and then the city can give their amount over and above what we've already given. Um, but this additional, people can get IRAs, they have this other option. I find it interesting that 51 individuals are participating in this other option with their own money. And I like that idea that they can do that. I mean, and they've always been able to do that. People can save their own money. Why do, why do we have to, as a city, uh, fund over and above what, what needs to be, uh, irregardless of the 7% of apparently several other cities do. And again, I'd like to see which cities they are. Um, I just think this would be a burden. And again, uh, after talking so negatively about how things could pan out in the future, to add this, because once you give a benefit, you can never take it back. That's pretty much the way it is, I mean, unless you go insolvent. But once we, once we start this, and this is again, you want more employees. Some, I heard someone say, let's hire more employees. Well, that's gonna act, add a lot more. If we add, now we're adding another, this amount, uh, over and above every year, and we're giving them 5% this year, which is really good. Now, all these other years, we've been very lucky to give them 3%. We're giving them 5%. Well, most of that 5% is going to be gone, or well, at least 1% of it, because um, they're going to have to do this and go into this, um, this new thing. It's sort of like another thing, like a big brother telling them, no, we know what's best for you. You need to take, give 7% of your income. And, um, and I just have a real negative feeling about that. They can, you know, 6% is fine. And if they want to give extra and more into a savings, they can. Uh, again, I'll, I'll bring this up. You know, as, as young, uh, the, some of the young workers who have small children and families, um, this little extra money for that 1%, they can either put it in a savings account for the future, which they may or may not ever achieve. They may never retire. They may die before then. But in the meantime, they might want to go on a vacation. They're not going to be able to do that. Or they could have the option to do that with that 1% that we wanted, but we're forcing them to take out of their, their paycheck. We're finally giving them some money, but we're saying, yeah, we're giving you money, but we're going to take it out. We're forcing you to take it out for your benefit and your good when you retire. And again, we don't know, a lot of these people leave before retirement, before that retirement age, and we have kind of a turnover. We, we want to keep people, of course, um, but I, I, I think this is, um, this is a very, um, um, uh, it's not a good thing for the city to, to, to add this to our liabilities. Just to interject, there's in 2018 there were 887 member municipalities. I knew I would find the number eventually. Yeah, I knew it was in there. Yeah. Anything else, Cynthia? Oh, that's it. Paul. On this uh, projected valuation results, uh, where it says estimated contribution, so I assume our estimated contribution this year is 261,000, and in eight years it'll be 387. Is that Assuming no additional employees. That's assuming everything, constant. that everything assuming constant. everything stays constant, yes. Okay, so 126,000 over eight years, roughly. 125 would be increased. Okay, I mean, that's, that's a lot of money in our, in our little budget. So, um, I mean, I, you always wanna be as generous as you can with your employees. but you have to be fiscally responsible. So I, I'd i like to stay at the six, especially I didn't know about the ICMA. I did not, I wasn't aware of that. And shame on me for not knowing that. Um, well, not necessarily, I, I've known about it, but uh, when I asked Rick to include this as part of it, 
simply to show that they do have a second option. Uh, my other uh, question was how many employees, and I, I was surprised 51 uh, are participating. I, I knew Rick and some of the others were, but I, didn't, I had no idea there were 51. Bert, uh, second round. Uh, once again, I am for the raise to uh, 7 percent. Um, I mean, in one, one point, we want to we want to cut our ad valorem taxes and but we don't want to give our cities, the, I mean, our employees the uh, opportunity to up their uh, um, their retirement amount that they get when they retire. You have to remember this when you can invest in ICMA, that's fine. Hopefully you'll, you'll get a return on your on your investment if you invest in, in the right areas. But you have to remember the city's matching it two to one. And as was said earlier, 75% of the cities are doing it. That's there must be something right about it. Um, I would I'm looking forward to the results of the uh, survey, and uh, well, I'm going to uh, go with that judgment. Is uh, I can tell you that I've done a verbal. Uh, I've been asking around. I've asked quite a few employees, and I've only had one person say that they did not want to contribute. So, 7%. That's all I got. Alex? Uh, two quick things, because I know this has probably gone longer than many wanted it to. Um, but it's important. If I, if I heard our administrator said correctly, 51 participate, but not actively. Is that correct? 51 participate. Basically, 51 people have money in the fund, but they're in not ICMA. adding to right. it. 30 employees actively contribute. So 40% of our employees are actually doing it today, not 50, not, yeah, not the 51 of the 80-something. 30 employees okay. actively contribute. So I just want to clarify that. Yeah, so they have in the past, but they're not today because for whatever their reason. I, I would say this. The city is in the, in the, in the service industry. I'm in the service industry where I work. If you have unhappy employees, you get poor service. It's that simple. You can't keep good employees if you don't treat them right. We want to be an employer of choice, and, and we want to have employees of choice, and this is a thing. I do look forward to what the employees want. I don't put the employees over the citizens by any means, but I can tell you if we have poor service, we're going to hear from the citizens. That's my other point. Thank you. Jim? Just to repeat, I, I don't think we need to demean what other opinions are or what are other results to voice our own opinion. My own opinion is that if we're in a fixed pie of people of looking in this kind of industry, a service industry, that we have to be competitive. And I'm not basing it on politics or on conservative or what they could contribute or anything else. I'm saying that we have to be competitive with our people we're going to be losing or gaining based upon them going from job to job. And if 75% of the cities, of cities, small and large, are contributing at 7% level, I'd like to see us contributing at that level. Cynthia, any follow-up? All I can say is if we have employees who are freaking out because they're not paying 7% into our retirement system and they're doing a poor job, then they shouldn't be working for us. I mean, excuse me. What a thing to say. When someone comes for a job and gets a job and they're given a, this is our, these are the benefits and this is the pay and they take the job, they better do a good job for us. I'm sorry, they better. And if they're complaining about it, then they need to go somewhere else. I mean, I've, I've worked in the workplace for a long time in the private industry and I, I didn't get a heck of a lot of money, but I always did my very best and worked my very best. It didn't matter what my retirement was. I mean, really, I, this is that's just beyond the pale. I, I, I just don't I just don't get it. Um, so, I still think that it's too much for our city to do this. Um, and uh, if we're not willing to give our citizens a break on their taxes, but yet use their taxpayer money to to uh, uh, buffer up. They're an employee. I, I, we're not a union. This is this council is not a union helping uh, workers. We are elected officials helping to, to, to do the uh, best for our citizens. And um, and like I said, we have a very good staff here. Uh, 
I don't know. I don't walk around here asking for people if, you know, if they're complaining and, and that kind of thing. The other thing, too, is this, this poll. Um, I'll be frank with you. I really am not that crazy. I don't really care. Um, I'm not going to say I don't care what they say. I will, uh, I, what I'm saying is we as elected officials have to sometimes do things that people don't like for the fiscal responsibility of, this, of, of our city. Um, and so if 90% of, of our, CIS, our, our uh, employees come and say, we want this, um, I'm not necessarily going to be for it. So that's how much against it I am. Paul? Well, no, I'm, I'm good. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> Again, just uh, some thoughts. Uh, I, I will say that <clears throat> in meetings that we've had at, at uh, TML and, and other places uh, through the years, uh, our benefits package has always been compared to others and, and pretty well stamped very, very good. Uh, we do have a lot of our employees that have been with us uh, for long periods of time. Uh, the turnover uh, is experienced by all municipalities, especially suburban, suburban municipalities, simply because uh, uh, it seems to be the newer employees and I don't know if, if I would just uh, automatically lump it all into younger employees, uh, but that seems to be uh, the folks that, that come and go. We have had people go and then come back because the grass wasn't as green on the other side. Uh, so I think you have to look at how many employees we have that have been with us a long time. Uh, and a long time now to me is five years, but even 10 years, and, and we'll have that number next time. It, it's, uh, uh, it's available to us, and uh, so we'll, we'll have that. And uh, I'm, I'm not so sure about this poll either. We'll ponder that. But uh, uh, it's, it's just, I hate to see things just lumped into poor service and poor benefits and, and turnover when these, these turnover issues, everybody experiences them and there's nothing you can do about it. And throwing more money at the issue isn't necessarily the solution any more than throwing a bunch more employees into the city to get more work done is, is a, an answer. But th that's just my opinion. And I feel like it's important to to consider this and, and I encourage you all to beat me up or however, but uh, we'll, we'll go one more uh, round with that. Uh, Bert? I'm, I've said all I want to say. Okay. Alex? Nothing further. Thank you. Jim? Just briefly, I, I don't want to be painted with the brush of saying that I want more employees, number one. I'm just saying when the time comes. Sure. Uh, that we will have to consider that. Sure. And number two, the fact that we are trying to be competitive does not make us not responsive to our citizenry. Uh, to me, it is a, an issue. It's one of the components on which we'll make a decision. That component being, are we competitive? If we have a, a beneficiary or a beneficial uh, package, then people will look at that in that fashion. <coughs> if we don't have a beneficial package, they'll look at it differently. I just think that's one factor in the decision. I don't demean anything else that is being brought up as far as pros and cons. I just think that we need to look at the whole package, and that to me is one element, is just where we are in, in the competitive, in the competitive world, and that's that's all I have to say on that. I agree, Cynthia. Anything else? No. Paul. No. Yeah, and just uh, in in closing, then I I would uh, like to say that uh, when we put these numbers together and make recommendations and everything, uh, Rick and I talk quite a bit, and uh, uh, me personally, whenever I make a recommendation or try and make a decision that's necessary. I, I, I look at it in, in uh, three levels. Uh, first of all, uh, I, I want to be sure that the decision uh, that's made is in the best interest of the city. Uh, second, uh, and that's the city overall. Second, uh, we want to be sure that it's a decision that's beneficial uh, to the citizens. And then thirdly, uh, that's, that's to me where the employees come in. And I, I have great respect for our employees, and uh, I, I know a lot of them just are with us because Holotus is a great place to, to work, and uh, uh, we're very proud of that. And uh, it, it's just, I feel like that, that needs to be said. Uh, city first, citizens, 
uh, right up there, and then employees. All three are very important and very critical to decisions that we make as a group, but that's me making decisions personally. Okay, Rick, anything to add to all of this? No, sir. Okay, thanks a lot. Uh, did you want to go over any numbers? I don't think it's necessary. There wasn't anything significant. I, uh, I can, but there... Did you did all have any specific questions? We, we had a little bit of a projected decrease in revenue, but we had a comparable decrease in expenditures, so everything still balances pretty well, and we don't, don't anticipate anything uh, major, as we said last uh, meeting, uh, between now and the 26th of September, and I look forward to more discussion on these issues so we can make good decisions on the 26th. You're done. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> good. You're good. good. Okay. That being said, uh, that's the end of our agenda. And um, certainly appreciate all the thoughts. And I can tell there's a lot of, a lot of passion. And that, that's what makes uh, this, to me, very exciting. And uh, hopefully it'll all wind up. Uh, in, in a good place on the 26th of September, and we will have more information for you next meeting. And uh, until then, uh, we will stand adjourned at 816. <laughs>